Hello everybody, good morning. Today we are on our third day of activity. I'm so happy again to be with you, working a little bit. I hope that you and your family are fine. Okay, let's begin with our daily routine. Ready? Sorry. What day is today? Today is Wednesday. What day was yesterday? Yesterday was Tuesday. What day will be tomorrow? Tomorrow will be Thursday. In which month are we? We are in Children's Month, April. The season of birds, flowers, hot, the weather can be sunny, partly cloudy, cloudy, rainy, maybe windy. Temperature can be very, very hot, hot, warm, cool, or cold. Okay? How do you feel today? Are you sick? Are you surprised? Are you sad? Are you hungry? Are you happy? Are you sleepy? Are you worried or are you annoyed? Okay, let me know how do you feel today and remember to fill this page. Your name, April 29th. Today's date, remember complete date, day, month, the number and the year, the weather, temperature, how do you feel with a beautiful picture. And I ask you today to tell me what do you like about your web class tell me two things that you like i like and complete your sentence and two things that you don't like okay that you don't like to work like we have been working okay remember to take a picture of your page and send it to me now let's go to our mental map okay are you ready? Did you open your book on page 166? Take your pencil and let's go. Today we are going to do additions, but a little bit, uh, not harder, but with more numbers. Ready? Remember, only 10 seconds to answer your operation. Number one, pay attention. 10 plus 5 plus 7 plus 3. Again, 10 plus 5 plus 7 plus 3. Write your answer. Number two, 21 plus 10 plus 9 plus 2. I will repeat. 21 plus 10 plus 9 plus 2. Write your answer. Number three. Fifteen plus fifteen plus three plus five. Again, fifteen plus fifteen plus three plus five. Write your answer. Number four. Twenty-five plus fifty plus five plus one. Twenty-five plus fifty plus five plus one.
write your answer. And number five, 60 plus 40 plus one plus two. 60 plus 40 plus one plus two. Write your answer. Okay, very good. Remember to take a picture of your mental map and send it to me. Okay? Very good. Let's go to our activity. Today we are going to talk about Rudolf Nureyev, Dancing to a Dream. Remember that we already listened to the story? Okay. We are going to use it again to continue working on it. I will not read it to you. We are not going to read it again. I just going to summarize the story. Okay, so pay attention. Remember what happened here? Hamid, Rudolf's father, went to find them in Moscow because he was in the army he was in a war so he went there he was working in the army he went there to find his family but what happened there he was waiting and they didn't get down from the train and suddenly one of her daughters asked him to go to the train because the baby was born rudolph was born in the train okay then what happened his father has to go again so they need to move to the town of Ufa there were a dancing school and they danced there the family Farida that is the mother, Rudolf, and his sisters didn't have a lot of money. They were a little bit poor. And then he began to go to school. But he had to wear one of her, his sister's coat and he has not shoes. So the the children in the school laughed at him, but it doesn't matter to Rudolf because he was really, really happy listening to music and dancing, and he loved to dance. So one of his sisters told to her mother that he was a really, really good dancer. Remember? So what happened then? There was a performance, a ballet performance. But as if you remember, they didn't have money. Farida think on something that was not honest to do so they can go to watch the ballet. So he cheated a little bit. He just paid for one ticket, but she was able to take everybody all her children to the ballet performance. There, Rudolf realized that he loves ballet, that he wanted to be a ballet dancer. Then he began to practice a lot, a lot, a lot, to be a really, really good dancer. He was teacher, he was teached uh, in when he was 10, and he began to become a dancer, but his father didn't want him to be a dancer. He wanted him to be or to study medicine for being a doctor or an engineer. But he kept dancing and practicing. At the age of 17, Rudy go into the 
Vaganova Academy in, Le in Leningrad. So we began to travel to move. And he was one of the first one to leave because he went to Moscow, sorry. And then he was one of the first one to leave Moscow because he was invited to dance in many places, remember? On that time, people was not able. It was forbidden to leave Moscow. But as he was a really, really good, really, really good dancer, he was invi invited to dance everywhere around the world many many places and he became one of the famous ballet dancer in the world he could dance everywhere and he uh, was able when he was not he was able to teach and to design her costumes direct many productions when he was not able to dance anymore so after was born in a train after his father didn't want him to be a dancer he worked really really hard and accomplished his dream being one of the best ballet dancer ballet dancer in the world okay very good so we are going to go to page 18 and we are going to answer this. It says, Enrich going deeper. Think about Rudy's life. Then write what you think would have happened if things were different. We are going to imagine what other things can happen if if Rudy had not gone to the theater with his mother and sister. What do you think that can happen if he didn't go? If, he, if her mother didn't try to get him into the ballet performance? Pay attention. I will show you some possible answers. Obviously, you can write your own answers or check this one. Okay, he had never discovered his love to dance ballet. Why? Because he will not be able to look at ballet performance. What else could happen? He could have been a scientist, maybe, or a doctor, or anything else. What else could happen? He could have danced other types of dances. Because if you remember, he loves to dance. Maybe he will not be able to dance ballet, but he will. Um, he could be any other type of dancer, like rock dancer or any other kind. Or he could enroll in the army, like his father. He can follow his father's steps. Okay, these are some of the answers that you can write or any other that you want because it's what you think number two says if Hamid who was Hamid yes his father if Hamid had not gone to war that means that he had been with them all the time so what could happen sorry he could ask to his son to enroll in the army right like we said before, because he was going to be with him and he can ask him to do that. He could ask to his son to be a doctor or an engineer, or he could realize that his son was really good dancing and he supported him. Those are some possible answers. You can write your own ideas. Number three, if Rudy had accepted to stay in Ufa and dance for the ballet company, do you remember that at the beginning he was dancing in Ufa, but then he moved to Moscow because he was invited to dance in other places. So he would have been a local dancer. What does that mean? That he maybe 
can dance only in Ufa, not everywhere, not all around the world. He wouldn't have become famous because maybe uh, he couldn't uh, dance in very important performances. He wouldn't have left Moscow. Remember that he was one of the first or one of the person that was able to go out of Moscow because he was a really good ballet dancer. Okay, those were some possible answers. Second part of the page. Reflect upon the things each character did. So each character means Rudy, Farida, his father. Okay, then write what you would have done in each situation. Imagine that instead of Rudy, it was you. Rudy wanted to be a ballet dancer. If you wanted to be a ballet dancer, what would you do? Okay, you are Rudy, okay? I would have or I wouldn't have. For example, I would, I would have fight for my dreams. I would have um, go to different places to practice, gone to different places to practice ballet. I would have kept uh, dancing. Okay, here on the bottom, I am writing some optional actions that you can do for the three answers. You can choose one, you can use it, or if you have another one, again, because this is you, it's what you think. I just trying to help you a little bit with some ideas. Okay. The first verb is in present. The second one is in past participle because in this case we have to use the verb in past participle. I will have gone after my dreams. I will have fought to, uh, to, uh, to pursue my dreams. I will have kept keep is to, to, man, to continue with something. Okay, I will have kept dancing everywhere, for example, okay? These verbs are some that you can use in the three of the answers. So, pay, it's when you use money, take, take classes, look for, to try to find some different options, show, to somebody can see me or ask, okay? On the first one, we said that it was Rudy. On the second one, you are Farida, the mother. Farida wanted to take her children to see the ballet, but didn't have enough money. So I would have paid for a ticket even when I don't have money. I would have borrowed money from someone that can give me a loan. I would have taken to another performance, maybe not that one. Okay, and finally on the number three, if you were the Major Hamid Nurejev. Major Hamid Nurejev wanted his son to study medicine or engineering. What would you do? I would have shown my father that I am a good dancer. I wouldn't have listened to my father. It can be affirmative or negative sentence. I would ask him to let me uh, keep dancing or maybe I would uh, listen to him to him and do what he wanted. Okay, these are your ideas. I just help you a little bit of how can you answer them. Okay, now let's go to our next page. Enrich visible thinking, analytical thinking, evaluating positive and negative aspects. Think about Rudy's story. Was it easy to become a professional dancer? Mm -mm. It was not easy. He was to practice a lot. He has to dance a lot. He has to effort a lot. He has to go on after his father wishes. Okay, second question. What challenges did he face? What things were hard to, for him? 
being a boy that wants to dance ballet, remember that his classmates at school have to, be, sorry, laughed at him at the beginning. Okay, another question. How long did it take to reach his goal? How long did, have, did he have to practice to be a really, really good ballet dancer? Okay, we are not going to discuss the answers, but you are going to write here your possible answers because remember, it's what you think. Imagine that you are a ballet dancer. What can be good? Or what can you do? You can dance everywhere. You can be famous. You can uh, or you have to eat healthy. You are a healthy person because you are dancing all the time, doing exercise. And obviously you have to eat healthy. You can know different places, visit different places because you went to performance in every place. What are things that are good? You are always uh, doing good things, means dancing, and that's what you like. Or you are a really a famous person. Negative aspects. You can't uh, maybe go to a party because you have to practice. You can't be with your family. You can't eat junk food always healthy food so sorry think on what are the things that are positive or negative being a ballet dancer is it clear okay and the last part would you want to become a professional dancer yes because i like to dance because i want to visit or to performance in different places in different cities in different countries maybe around the world because i want to be famous because dancing is something that i love i, I and i want to dance or no no because i don't like to dance no because i want to um, spend more time with my family because i want to be a scientist maybe or an a doctor or something else okay so that's it for today you can answer the self-assessment questions according to the answers what helps you evaluate the positive and negative aspects what helped me because always when I do something that I don't I like or even when I don't like everything has something positive everything has something negative so what helped me to evaluate what things are good or bad for me and finally what did you like about sharing your thoughts with the class or when you can maybe we are not sharing now things but you can think on the answer or leave it like that don't answer it okay so that's it for today. Thank you very much. I know that reading is really, really hard. Remember that you have to send me your files. Take a picture of the daily routine, additional page, mental math, page 18 and page 19. Change the name, your name and today's short date and try to send them, send it before 6 p.m. If you want, that's it. You can stop the video or if you want to and you need it, you can read again the story. After now, I will play it. If you don't want to read it again, it's not obligatory. You can stop the video now. If you want to listen again the story, here it is. Okay, so if you decided to don't listen, bye-bye. See you tomorrow. You can stop the video now. If you need to listen the story, maybe even you can play it later. Okay? So here it is. Rudolf Nuria, Dancing to a Dream, 1938. 
1993. Major Hammond Nureyev stood in the snow. He waited for the train that would bring his wife, Farida, and their three daughters to Moscow. It was March 1938. Hammond had been in Moscow for a month already. He was working at his new job in the army, trying to find a place for his family to live. Finally, the train pulled into the station. Hammond watched eagerly as the passengers got off. But he did not see Farida or his daughters. Disappointed, he turned away. Suddenly, he heard the voice of his daughter, Lilia. Papa, Papa, come quickly! He turned and saw her standing in the doorway of the train. Her sisters, Rasida and Rosa, stood behind her. Hamid hurried onto the train. There, he found Farida with a tiny bundle in her arms. She smiled up at him. The baby came early, but he's fine. The baby was born on the train? He asked. Farida nodded. He was in a hurry, she said. They named the baby Rudolph. His sisters called him Rudy. The family stayed together in Moscow for only a short time. A war was coming, so Hammond was sent far away. Rudy and his mother and sisters left Moscow. They went to live in the small town of Ufa, 800 miles away. Times were hard for many families during the war. Rudy shared a one-room apartment with his sisters, his mother, the family dog, and other relatives. It was cold and there was not enough to eat. Rudy and his sisters were often hungry, so their mother would try to distract them. She told stories and sang to them. Rudy danced with his sisters as his mother sang. It was fun and it helped them stay warm. When Rudy was old enough, he started school. He had no shoes. His only coat had belonged to his sister. Other children laughed at him, and he made few friends. It was not fun for him. But there was one thing he loved about school. There, he could hear more music and learn how to dance. Each day, the children learned Russian folk dances at school. Rudy danced barefoot and jumped and twirled in time to the music. It helped him forget his hunger and the icy cold weather. His sisters told their mother Rudy was the best dancer in the school. Farida looked at her small son. If only he could see some professional dancers, she thought. How happy he would be! Amazingly, there was a theater in the small town of Ufa. There, people could go to see ballet and hear opera. Farida longed to take her children to see these performances, but tickets were expensive. They needed to save for food and clothing. When Rudy was seven years old, a dance group came to Ufa for a special New Year's Eve performance. Faria wished her children could go. She had an idea. She bought a ticket for herself, then gathered her children around her. I am an honest woman, she told them, but this once, I will do something dishonest. We will all go to the ballet. She explained how she would hide little Rudy under her wide coat. Then, the girls could slip into the theater with the large crowd there. Farida hoped no one would notice or ask them for tickets. It was not honest, but Farida wanted to give her children the chance to see the famous dancers and hear the live orchestra. It was the only way she knew. It worked! 
Rudy held his breath under his mother's coat. She gave her ticket to the usher. Soon, they were in the crowded, dark room. They were joined by Rudy's sisters. They all stood along the back wall. The ballet began. Rudy was enchanted. He knew right there that he wanted to be a dancer. When Rudy was 10, a ballet teacher from Moscow offered to teach him for free. His father was not happy. He did not want his son to be a dancer. He wanted his son to study medicine or engineering. But Rudy learned quickly. After a year or so, he needed a more advanced teacher. He was so good that when the lead dancer in Ufa's ballet group got injured, Rudy filled in at the last minute. At 17, Rudy got into the Vaganova Academy in Leningrad, a very good dance school. He immediately started taking extra classes. He worked all night to learn steps and strengthen his muscles. He listened to recordings of famous ballets. When he graduated, Two of the world's most famous ballet companies offered him contracts. In 1961, Rudy was the first Russian artist to leave the country when it was forbidden. He spent the rest of his life dancing all over the world. When he was no longer able to dance, he taught others. He directed many productions. He even designed costumes. He died in Paris in 1993 at the age of 54. Born on a moving train, Rudy was always in a hurry. He came from a tiny town in the far, cold reaches of Russia, but he became one of the most famous dancers in the world. With talent, dedication, and determination, Rudolf Nureyev worked hard to be the best. He made his lifelong dream come true. Okay, remember that you don't have to do anything. This was only if you need more help to do your activities, to remember all the story. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Bye.